Hi, my name is Nicholas Ralph, and I play James Herriot in All Creatures Great and Small. And I also narrate the audiobooks uh, for the All Creatures Great and Small series. And we've just done two more recently, which will be out to buy. Um, some of my favourite moments from these books. One brilliant story, one wonderful story, is when James, it's the beginnings of the artificial insemination, and James has uh, his first attempt at it with a bull and this artificial vagina. So he's going through the, pr the procedure and he's, he's trying to, uh, to use this device on the bull. And this is about his third attempt and the bull by this point is really uh, upset with him and really not liking it. So he goes to, to charge him down. And, and so James has to get into the corner of the barn and he's swiping the bull and hitting his nose with the artificial vagina. And he's hitting the bull. <laughs> he's hitting the bull to get him to calm down and it's starting to just disintegrate. It's in like three parts. One part just disintegrates. So he's got two parts left. And he says that he thinks that a world famous fencer would be impressed by his lunges with this other piece of the artificial vagina, his lunges and swipes at the bull. And then eventually the third piece, which has water in it, explodes over the bull's head. And by this point, he's really confused and also just fed up with this human and leaves him to it. And James says that he thinks he's probably the first and only vet to ever fight off a bull using an artificial vagina, which I thought was very, very funny. Um, there's another wonderful story about two neighbours. So one neighbour has a sick pig and one neighbour has a sick bull. Um, and the first neighbour is the loudest man in Yorkshire. You can hear him over fields. He's like, all right, James, how are you doing, lad? I've got a rat pig here. He's looking right badly. And see, you can hear him over fields and fields of Yorkshire. And the other neighbour speaks very, very quiet. Pianissimo, as James writes in the books. Uh, when he speaks to him, he, he almost breathes onto his cheek, which is, again, it's just it's the writing is so good, it's so funny. So you must listen or read, read and listen. Um, so but anyway, he tends to both these animals. And then he's at the farmer's market on a Sunday. And all the, the farmers, they congregate outside the pub and they're having a few beers. Um, and the, uh, so the vet, the, sorry, the, uh, the neighbor with the sick pig, it doesn't do very well at all. And he's there with his big booming voice. He's oh, James, I don't know about that pig, but he went down right bad. I don't know what you gave to him, but he went down like so fast after you did. And James like, oh yes, yes, trying to get away. And this has pricked up the ears of all the other farmers because they love a bit of gossip and they love nothing more than gossip and a bit of, <laughs> a bit of when someone else's animals are going down or doing badly. So James is like, oh yeah, yeah, and just trying to get away. Yeah, I know, James, that's, that's it. He went down right bad. What did you give him anyway? It was terrible, that stuff, I think. And he's not being mean, he's just saying the facts of the matter, James says. He's like trying to get away, and then he finally manages to, to get past him, and he's like, oh, thank goodness for that. And he bumps into the really quiet neighbor who had the sick bull. And this bull has made a miraculous transformation. He's been cured. He was inches away from death and now he's like the healthiest bull that there is and this guy comes up and just whispers into his ear oh mr Harriet, i don't know what you did but that bull's magnificent now and he, oh, oh really oh, speak up a little bit won't you and the farmers are still kind of looking at speak up won't you a little bit more oh, he was he was circling the drain and now he's absolutely marvelous oh really i can't quite hear you could you speak up? He, he says as he secret he secretly whispers into my ear and the other farmers at this point not seeing anything else going on can go back and talk amongst themselves and he leans in and he says that was the most marvelous and wonderful cure i've ever seen james says he breathed onto my cheek <laughs> it's, it's, it's just the writing it's so it's so good it's uh it's a it's a joy to to read and uh and a, and a joy to a joy to perform with these characters as well. And these wonderful descriptions of these characters as well give you so much to play with. Um, and there's also a, a lovely story with a guy called Walt Barnett, who's the meanest guy in Yorkshire. He's really rich. He's you know he, he's always really horrible to his uh, workforce, and uh, he's always trying to get things on the cheap. He's a real a real mean character. No real no real friends or anything. And um, but it turns out this cat stray cat comes into his um, office. And starts to sit and uh, and day after day this cat appears um, to the point where Walt takes a, a shining to it and, and then he's sick so James gets called out to, to visit this cat and uh, and he bumps into one of the workers and he says what's this about this this guy with the with the cat he he doesn't care about a single living thing and James is like well I can you know I can almost agree with you there but 
So anyway, he goes to visit the cat, and it turns out that the cat has been uh, has been uh, physically hurt intentionally. People are putting rubber bands around its limbs, um, and this may be in retribution for something Walt's done. They, they don't know, but. James is horrified, of course, so he treats the cat. This happens a second time. He treats the cat again, and then, thankfully, it goes quiet. He goes, gets called back a year later, and he thinks, Walt thinks the cat's been poisoned this time. The cat's not doing very well at all. And James is like, oh, God, not, not again. Please, not again. He turns up. Anyway, the cat is actually just unwell. It's very, very sick. And James says, you know, he's in a lot of pain, and the best thing would be to, to put him down, unfortunately. And the big man says... Right, okay, and he, he rubs him with something he says a sausage like finger. He just strokes the cat like that. That's all he ever James the only interaction James ever sees this man and this cat. And then he puts him down and the big guy puts his hands over his face and just sobs. And he says to James, oh, I bet you'll have a right laugh about this down at the pub later, won't you? Oh Walt Barnett crying over a over a cat. What a what a you know, what a weakling, what you know, whatever. And James, there's no more dialogue but it, James finishes a chapter saying, you know, this big man thought this display of weakness would be something that I would, you know, laugh at him about or make fun of him about. And he says, actually, it was the complete opposite. I've never liked him more since. Um, and I just thought it was a real touching, lovely, um, lovely story. So those are some of my favorite moments.